Welcome, everybody. This is episode 60 of The Sean Lauer Show. And my guest's resume is so long that I'm just going to pre-record it here. Clinton is a a Grammy-nominated artist. Clinton Sparks. He was huge in the 2000s. He's a multi-platinum recording producer. And he's a publisher responsible for selling over 75 million records. Uh, He has won BMI Songwriter Awards with Clinton Sparks Entertainment Incorporated. And he's also the recipient of numerous music awards with DJ Snake as part of his Get Familiar music publishing. He's written and produced hit songs for multi-platinum recording artists such as Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Rick Ross, Diddy, Pitbull, Ludacris, Big Sean, Akon, and 2 Chains. YouTube, Clinton Sparks, you'll see this guy, he's huge. Uh, He's uh, created critically acclaimed projects with artists from Eminem, Kanye West, Buster Rhymes, in the clips, whose We Got It For Cheap series was named the Rolling Stone Magazine's Top 50 Albums of the Year. This dude never wanted to be in front of the camera, but he started doing it just to show people how to do it. Clinton Sparks, YouTube, see how big he is. He's giant in the music industry, and his book is called Win Big in the Music Business, and it was awesome to talk to him. Enjoy the podcast. What the hell does that mean? Don't be so embarrassed. Clinton Sparks, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? Dude, you have the most impressive resume that I've seen in a while, especially for coming on the Sean Lowry Show. This is a an entrepreneurship podcast. This episode, episode sixty of my podcast. So, wow. uh, congratulations, yeah. round of applause. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I mean it's it's a lot of work, but like uh, you started in the radio business, right? Yes. It's funny, You're like right. to be on the radio, I feel like you need to have somebody accept you and approve you and be like, okay, here's the show. Here's the radio show. To start a podcast, anyone can do it. You don't have to be that special to start well, a podcast. I was podcasting in the early 2000s before podcasting was even a word or a thing. What? So like, I was taking my radio shows and uploading them to Apple as podcasts. Really? Like, that wasn't even... Yeah, so I've been podcasting. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> dude, you're, yeah, your resume, right. your resume is, is insane, dude. And I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. But I saw you posted a picture today with uh, some guy named Eminem. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so, I mean, that Eminem pretty much was at the beginning of my professional career. You know, like, obviously, since I was 10 years old, I wanted to do music and was doing music uh, and starting my own businesses since I was 12. Um, but like... I never considered myself anything until I don't consider myself a legitimate like DJ or producer until I started getting paid for it. Okay. Uh, and that was about 2000. Um, so then, you know, 1999 and that's when me and Eminem met, uh, you know, he came to my mom's house and, you know, we hung out for the day. And, uh, he I was saw, I, I saw, and- I saw you pranked him. You put the, uh, you, you give him a fake boner. <laughs> put the water bottle, water bottle in your pants to prank him. That was uh, hilarious. That came up on your YouTube. Shoes. Yeah, it was a lot of tissues and stuff I put in my pants. That's when I was a host on E News for several years. So when I had him on there because we were buddies, I um, I pranked him and it was pretty funny. Yeah, like you said, it's on YouTube, so you can see Clint yeah. Sparks prints Eminem or right. like, the shafting of Eminem <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Dude, but yeah, yeah, it's like uh, like and then you did did you do music with him? Uh, yeah, we did a bunch of stuff, a bunch of mixtapes. Um, the most popular one is called Anger Management. So I w- I helped him launch Shade 45, which is his radio station. Yeah. So I was on there from day one. And then I put together all those mixtapes for the Anger Management Tour. Uh, so we have a bunch of like freestyles and stuff on there that are exclusive to those mixtapes. <laughs> yeah, freestyle. Uh, the, the funniest thing, anybody that knows that era, whenever they associate me and Eminem, there's a funny drop he says on there. He says something like, uh, you know, Clinton Sparks is white like me. Like, so people <laughs> always like quote that line. Or like, don't be afraid. He's just a white man with turntables. Like, he's like all the funny things he would say on the table. People always quote those when they associate us together. Dude, that's amazing. And uh, yeah, like your book is, it's, it's how to win big in the music business, right? And like, I love that because boom, how to win big in the music business. And I love that because by Clinton Sparks forward by Damon John, of Shark Tank, 
Yeah. My company, my company recently applied to Shark Tank. We put together an amazing video. It didn't get accepted, so I'm a little mad at Damon John right now. I'll get over it. Uh, he's not the one that chooses, so yeah, no, we don't need him. I, I, I think our sales were too high to uh, to get accepted on the show. That's 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 what we're telling ourselves. But uh, right, nice. but the but the 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 business of music always fascinates me. I love music. I love rap. Like. I'm not a complete expert. Like, actually, my friends make fun of me that I don't know enough. And I just like, like, I kind of like Drake and Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne. Like, I know, like, kind of the big names. And they make fun of me right. that I like, like, pop and radio stuff. But I love music. It's it's amazing. And the, I, I'm always fascinated by the business element of music. I recently had a fancy football draft with my friends. And we were talking about, like, NFL running backs and how short their careers are and how, like, yeah. hard it is to stay relevant. And I was thinking in my yeah. head, like, of all the artists over the years that were huge for a little while and then you don't hear about them as much anymore like do you think that's one of the hardest things in the music business for an artist is to like maintain relevancy over like a a 10 year period i do and that is why i wrote this book for those people that do fall off and don't know how to stay relevant okay Uh, the good thing about this book how to win big in the music business is it cuts to the chase it gets to the point and it just tells you matter of fact you know, practical act, actions you should be taking. Uh, I even say in the introduction, I'm going to teach you how to do more dope shit and less whack shit. Because okay. a lot of people do things that are not the right thing to do. They're misinformed, they're misled, they're misguided um, on what they think they should be doing to become relevant. Look at people buy fake plays, fake streams, fake likes, mm. fake comments, all these things. So they can feel like they're popping. Mm. It doesn't mean they are. They just feel like they are. Mm. And then they wonder why you know, they're not getting the reaction or the engagement or the money or the shows mm-hmm. or the deals, you know, a year or two later. And quite frankly, you know, somebody else is surpassing them that in yeah. their mind, they don't think is as good. Yeah. Right. So it is, it, the book really teaches you how to build your brand, how to build a sustainable business and how to make it scalable. Uh, and I think a lot of people, they don't understand that. If you ask the average kid that wants to make music, you know, it's, they want to be rich and famous, right? right? And that's, that's their goal, right? So, okay, that's, that's a fine goal, but what are you going to do to achieve that goal? And how are you going to get to that goal? So it's like, I think a lot of, especially young kids, don't really understand what, one, what it takes, two, how to build a real business model that can create a sustainable brand and then how to scale that brand. Mm. So they live off the hype or the excitement of the internet of social media, which you and I both know the internet lies, right? So, <laughs> so, yeah. so it's it's like you're falling for your own fake hype instead Man. of really putting in the work. I would rather have 5,000 true fans that love the shit out of me, buy my merch, listen to what I'm saying, can't wait for me to drop new music, than 500,000 fake people right. that just looks like it. Right. And I get 25 comments. You know right. what I mean? like, we're all hit to the game. We right. all know and you're not fooling anybody. If you're dope, Dope will find an audience. That's now, awesome. One of the chapters in my one of the chapters in my book is um, famous doesn't make you great, but great can make you famous. Um, I love that. And I think that's people focus more on the famous part than the great part. Like we look at like greats like Beyonce to Elton John to Michael Jackson to you know Jay Z to Drake, as you said. Yeah. Like, they didn't start off thinking, "Oh man, I'm going to get mad likes." Oh man, right. I can't wait to get. They just wanted to be great and they right. put in the work, even against odds, even against people not believing in them, even at a time where there wasn't social media to like hype up the, the world and make pretend you're doing better than you really are. They actually had to be dope for people to say, yo, they're dope. And now I want to tell my friends how dope they are. So <laughs> if you take amazing. the mentality of like, just use the internet, don't let the internet use you. Yeah. Right? So if you just be great, and then use the internet to showcase the great, the great will find and build an audience. That's amazing. And I think that goes like across lines in all businesses. It's, it's like depth, yes. depth over width. I like how you said you'd rather have uh, 5,000 loyal fans or whatever you said, rather than like 10,000 5, or 5 million fake ones. Like it's so important. And I think especially maybe for a young rapper who, you know, it's all about like chilling back, throwing your money out there, be partying with girls. Like that is the, uh, like the aura of the music. Like no, like a little bit, they might talk about hard work, but I don't know, maybe a young person, they might not understand how much real, real, real hard work is involved. Like, do you think that everyone who's made it big, 
like really, really puts in the work? And like, what is hard work in the music business? Is it a certain amount of songs you put out? Is it a certain amount of albums? Is it doing content every day? What do you think like is hard work for an up and coming artist? Well, the foundation of that is don't be a dick, right? So again, that applies to every industry, right? So if you start off with that, that's always don't be a dick. That, right? Like, yeah, what does that don't mean? Don't be a dick, right? like to your fans or to don't be anyone? ignorant, don't be disrespectful to people's okay. time, to people's attention. Okay. If you do have an audience, don't take them for granted. Uh, don't act like you're bigger or better than anybody. Take all your meetings, like communicate with people in person and online. There's just a lot of things. Like I've seen so many. I've been doing this for 20 years. I can't tell you how many artists I've seen who will have one hit record. They're on top of the world that month, right? And they're feeling themselves so much that they're like dismissing opportunities and not responding mm. to things that could be potential great opportunities in the future. They're not treating the gatekeepers and the people that help them get there respectfully. And then they fall off, mm. right? And then all of a sudden they become, they, they eat some humble pie and yeah. they're like, hey man, let's play bread. Hey man, uh, yo, remember when we met back in the day, you know, six months ago, you know, I got this going on. He's like, nah, dude. You were a dick. And I'm actually kind of, you deserve kind of where you're at right now. Because no one should be like trying to help you out because you are a super dick to everybody. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big ambassador of treating people well. And I treat, you could be the CEO of a company or you could be an aspiring artist. I treat everyone exactly the same. I, like I mean, that. look at how I connected with you. Yeah, man. I reached I you on so DM. Happy. We don't know each other. No. I reached out to you on DM. Look, I've sold 75 million records responsible for billions of streams and views. Good. I've signed and wrote some of the biggest artists in the world. I've built multi, multi-million dollar companies. I ran one of the biggest esports teams in the world. There's so much shit that I've done that most people at my place are like, I'm not going to troll DMs and reach yeah. out to somebody. And you're hustling. You reached out, you out to a small entrepreneur podcast like me. I love that, man. And, and right. that's it's what, like you're a hustler. Right. It's like you, you never stop. You don't get complacent. you got to be consistent and persistent and on top of that you have to understand there's a fine line between being persistent and annoying right <laughs> so like this is a lot of psychology in how to approach uh, any business and like i teach you even though it says how to win big in the music business the principles and values i teach in this book are transferable to any industry including your own personal relationships so to answer your question in short terms yes the hard work entails you know reaching out and engaging with people, never thinking, never getting complacent, creating dope, putting it out, 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 not holding, waiting for some magical moment that's never going to happen. Right. You have to just keep putting shit out. Look, you didn't make five podcasts and say, yo, I did five killer podcasts. I should be number one. In the You're like, no, I'm going to nope. do 10, 20, 30, 40, yep. 50, 60, and I have no plans of stopping. No, nope. you know I'm going to keep haul. going. And guess what? One of those, you could do 200, and it might be the 201st right. that breaks that somebody talks about on Reddit or someone posts, and all of a sudden, all those other 200 skyrocket where you want to be because you kept putting in the work. And the same goes with video content, music. Right. You know, you can't get discouraged when you put out 32 songs and you're still only at 15,000 followers right. or 2,000 followers. Right. It could be the 16th song, depending if you keep trying different ways of breaking it. If right. you keep trying to knock down a brick wall with snowballs, then <laughs> it's never going to happen. Right. You, but then you when can't you, keep doing when, the same thing over and over again. It doesn't work. And when you do have that one that hits, I feel like a, b a good b piece of business advice is like never get too high, never get too low. Cause then you have that one that gets hit and you might get cock get cocky and like do what you said, like ignore opportunities and stuff like that. But no, remember all those ones that you did that didn't hit. And like I feel like it might be almost like a a disservice for somebody to get hit a big hit like right away. Cause then they might get cocky and like I'll I will i will know. I'll remember when I hit it big, uh, to never get too cocky, dismiss opportunities. Like I love that advice. And I think that's, that's huge for people in, in music and in all industries. It's just like, well, my, my mentality is I'm well aware that especially in today's climate, one thing can destroy your entire career. <laughs> right. So it's like, you can't get too high. Every, even, you know, something to be honest, you think it's hard to get there once you're there that's even harder to stay there. Imagine swimming, right? Yeah. You swim out into the ocean where it's too deep for you, right? Where you don't touch the ground. Now you're just sitting there. You got to tread water. 
Guess right. how hard it is to tread water for 30 minutes. Yeah. It wasn't hard for you to swim out there. Right. But once you got there and had to tread for 30 minutes, that's the work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, you got to use that same analogy for business. Like, that's just part of your goal was to get there. Now, getting there, now the real work starts. Because right. now you have to maintain that level of, you know, killerness. Right. You know what I mean? That people buy into. You. Right. One of the things I teach in the book, too, is like, once you get there, and you get people to buy into you or you compel them enough to come to your social media or watch your videos or listen to your songs, you got to give them dope shit constantly because right. as quick as you, as, once you, it's hard to gain them, easy right. to lose them. You right. know, it's just like a customer. You know what I mean? Like you got to spend all this money and promotion and marketing to get a customer, but they'll drop you in a heartbeat if they feel like you ain't doing right by them or you put out whack product, you know, in any business. So, you know, especially in music, man. So you got to really, I mean, look at the greatest that do it. And the people that stick around, they're engaging. They do new things. They they innovate right. what they're doing. They don't keep right. doing the same thing over and over again. They're not complacent. Yeah. So, you know, that applies to music yeah. and every business. So, like, once you get to the top, it's hard to stay there, obviously. Like, do you have any tips for, like, once you get there to stay there? Like, one thing that I like. One of my favorite artists do it is collaborate. I know you've done a lot of that in your career, like uh, collaborating, right? Like from a music level, like for podcasting, you know, we're having a conversation. It's pretty transparent. Like I'm always curious in music, like when people have a song together, like do they get together and write it or do they like, does one person make the beat and like send it to them? Or like, how does collaborating yeah. in music like kind of go down? And do you think that's an important part of staying on top? Collaborating is an important part in any business, um, okay. especially right. in music. Uh, but there's, there's, there's several different ways. You can be in the studio together, you know, someone's in, in town. How it usually happens is someone's in town, you know, you know, pull up to the studio, they pull up, they throw in some beats and they jump on a record together, right? Um, that's that's one way. The other way is you make a record and you leave a verse open and you're like, I got to get a feature for this record. And then you start reaching out to artists and management, and A&Rs and labels, uh, depending on what level you're on. Uh, right. If you're, you know, an aspiring artist, maybe you found somebody else on the internet with someone local in your city that they have their following, you have your following. Why don't we get on a record together and bring those followings together? Um, I think locally, especially when you're new, and this applies to any business too, um, most people find other people as competition. Uh, so mm. instead of collaborating, uh, mm. they're very like fearful to ah. share or move into their world. But I've never been that way. Like even last night, I was on the phone with Pusher, Pusha T. No way. Um, Pusha and T. He I has love Pusha T. He has, yeah, he has an esports uh, organization he started. Um, and, and as do I, Exet. You're familiar with Exet.com. Yeah, it's so and, um, it. you know, and I was like, yo, I, I see that there's a lot of things where I can help what they're doing. And I suggested, why don't we be like the first two orgs that actually collaborate and show camaraderie? Because typically everybody just stays within their own like kind of uh, uh, organization. And I was like, let's just do shit together. And then he hit me like at midnight, like we talked at nine and he hit me back at midnight. He's like, man, your idea about collaborating on drops and merch and business overall is amazing. Let's move <laughs> forward on that. So, and that's me, one, not being fearful of somebody else's sauce. Right. You know what I mean? Two, right. seeing the value that I can bring to them and also the value that they can bring to me. So understanding how to mutually benefit from, from each other is, is kind of what I specialize in. So I can see, hey, you need this from me. I need this from you. Here's what we should do together. And if you can look at the two biggest things, if you can delete them, you will go so much further, so much faster is ego and greed. Uh, those are two things I've never had, uh, which, which I guess is probably why I've been so successful because I never look at things like I need to win and you need to lose. And I never, and I also never feel like I'm greater or better or bigger than somebody. I just, let's just make some dope shit happen. Dude, and even if I have to take the lead, do more work than you, I don't mind. Cause at the end of the day, my objective is to get this done. Whether I have to do the work, you do the work, we collaborate to get the work done, I don't care. If, look, at, if I have to hit the home runs for us to win the World Series, we're all in the World Series. Who cares if we hit the home run? Dude, I love that. That's honorable. It's funny that you bring up Pusha T with a collaboration thing because he's got one of the famous rap beefs with Drake. It's like, uh, yeah. right? Do you think you think that's like a little bit of marketing, or do you think that's like organic when like a Nicki Minaj and a and a Cardi B beef, or like a Drake and a Pusha T? Like, you think that's like behind the scenes, like a marketing strategy? Because I feel like it kind of helps them. Or do you think it's like legitimate beef, or you don't know anything about that because you're the guy collaborating? No, I, I think that originally it'll start off from miscommunication, okay. something taken the wrong way, 
uh, or jealousy. Uh, so ah. typically those are the reasons why uh, a beef will start. And then once it organically happens or okay. authentically feelings are involved, after that, then you take strategic calculated moves that will help mm. with your marketing. And, and no one knows how to do that better than 50 Cent. Um, so, you know, he's, <laughs> he's always been very calculated. I yeah, remember one time 50 Cent was through a first pitch for a Mets game or something like that. And he just yeah. threw it like into the stands or something. And that was right when it, like his album was coming out. And I think that people were yeah. saying like that was promotion. I always think that stuff's funny, but it's, uh, it's, he's, he's brilliant. But um, yeah. So, so for you in the music industry, right? Like I, like I've heard all your songs and the, it's incredible the people you've done music with, but is that how you started? Cause I was also looking and I heard that you said that you didn't want to start being a, as the person in the front. You want it to be behind the scenes, but then eventually yeah. you kind of went in front of the scenes. Like, how did that all play out for you? Well, I always wanted to be the guy that built businesses and, and, and developed brands and help in like, you know, nurture and grow and, and market artists. Uh, but being, you know, at the time when I was coming up in the early 2000s, you know, a white guy from Boston trying to make <laughs> it in hip hop. And at that time, you know, hip hop was very, uh, for the most part, you know, black in New York. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, when I would try to teach or tell right, oh, let's do this way, let's do that. You know, I'd bring them to my studio, we'd cut records, I'd get features from them, I'd pay for all the production and everything. And then when I'd say, let's do this, they're like, nah, bro, I want to do it this way. And I'm like, no, no, that won't work. And here's why. You know, a lot of people wouldn't listen to me. They wouldn't listen. Uh, because of like, who are you? Why would you know more than me, right? So um, being frustrated by continually trying to build other artists and they didn't get it, and then we'd end up just falling apart because they wouldn't get it. Um, I, I was, I think my manager and a friend of mine was like, why don't you just focus on you? Like, you know, you're going to win. You always show up. You always do great work. You always network and build relationships with people. You're the guy. So why don't you just focus on the Clinton Sparks brand instead of trying to keep getting disappointed from you spending all this time building other people and they don't appreciate it. So uh, that's what I did. When people wouldn't listen to me, you know, to show them how to become a million dollar brand. I just built myself into one. Dang. Um, so you just, you just did, you're like, all right, I guess I got to do it myself then just to like show people. Yeah. So then I became a DJ. Um, and then I just started marketing and promoting and outworking everybody. And, you know, I quickly grew to be honest, bro. Like within two years of me starting, I became one of the most recognized DJs, mixed safe DJs Dude. probably in the world. And I've won like mixtape awards, radio awards, like, you know, I'm a, in you're, New York and like in New best, York, yeah. the place where like I shouldn't be winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because at that time too, you know, it was when Eminem was like, you know, he had a beef. Speaking of beefs, he had a beef with a prominent guy in Boston at the time. And he was making fun of Boston, which hurt Boston even more. Uh, who, you know what who, I mean? Who's so, this guy? Oh, his name was Benzino. Ah, this might be a little before my time. I don't remember that. Yeah, one. yeah. So they had a big, they had a big beef back and forth. Um, and you know, he said he that line kind of like made Boston look a little stupid. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I did, but that line <laughs> um, so yeah, so that ended up happening. So everything was against me. You know what I mean? So I just, I outworked everybody. And there's so many people in the music industry to this day that have Clinton Spark stories yeah. that'll tell you like, man, this dude used to come to my office and say, you need to get familiar with me. And here's why. And I was like, man, who's this white boy from Boston? <laughs> and then they were like, somehow, some way he convinced me to do it. You know yeah, what I mean? So, dude, you're, you know, that was, you're, it you're was, talented. It and get my persistence. I love that. And get familiar. That's like kind of your part of your brand, right? Get familiar. Get familiar is my sparks. handle and my tagline. Since I, again, back when I first started uh, in 99, I treated myself as a brand. And when you think of any like big brand, they have a tagline. Yeah. So when I came up with that in 99, Clinton Sparks, get familiar. Um, I thought it was fantastic because you could use that. Obviously, I had a trademark everywhere. So in my mind, I know one day I'm going to start a marketing company. I know my brand's going to grow. And I can tell you to get familiar with me. Artists can say get familiar with Clinton. I can say get familiar with artists. And then also as a marketing company, when I do deals with, say, a Maserati, you know, we can do stuff which like get familiar with the all new Maserati. It's just a hard line. <laughs> What's stronger than get familiar? I love it, right? man. That's um, hard. So it's funny, too, because back when I started, um, and I was positioning myself as a brand, uh -huh. everybody would laugh at me and be like, what are you talking about? You're a brand. You're a fucking DJ. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, no, I'm a brand, guys. No, That's I'm why. a brand. And I, the reason I was able to, to flourish being a brand is I detached myself 
Clinton Sparks from the brand Clinton Sparks. Ah. So I never, so I was able to remove any emotion uh, if someone didn't like me or love me. So I never get a big head and I never get offended. Nice. I looked at it like I was a CEO of this company called Clinton Sparks, and I just had to do what was good for the company. That's awesome. You know, uh, you know, Lil Dicky. Yeah, of course. I love Lil Dicky. Yeah, you, you know him personally at all? Just curious, like you seem to know. I don't know everyone. him personally. I, I just got through binging on his show on Hulu. Yeah, so in his show, he's funny because he's like, he, he tweets like, "I just got head," and then his girlfriend's like, "Hey, I saw you just tweet it. I just got head." Like, uh, my mom saw that. I'm a teacher. Like. He's like, and she's like, I didn't yeah. even do it. He's like, I'm a separate little Dickie's separate from Dave. Like that just made me think of that. And that show was actually yeah. kind of insightful. I like that. I thought that was interesting in the show and I don't know how true, but he paid to get somebody on his music. Like, is there some of that in the industry? Like if you're an up and comer and you have the money and you could like pay someone to get on your song, like, is that, is that a thing in the, in the world at all? Or is it a lot more usually organic? Like, uh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the yeah. thing. Even when you're famous, successful, you pay for people. So you know, whether right. you're a local oh, really? artist and you're trying to get a rap run, you might give them a five thousand dollar bag. Okay. You know what I mean? Just a, a brown bag with cash in it. You know what I mean? Or, uh, or you could be you could even be Drake. You know what I mean? And Drake's like, hey, I want to go get you know another major artist on you know J Balvin. You know what okay. I mean? Then the, lab the labels sort that out. They, they label sort it. Okay, out. how much do you need? How much? Okay, okay one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a feature. All right, cool. And they pay it. It comes out of his recording budget. That's cool. That's very interesting. I love that yeah. because Jay Belvin, that might get like the uh, Hispanic audience and like that might all make sense. It's so fun to see all that stuff. Like, uh, and like for someone coming up in the music industry, like, like there's, what are the different, what are the different jobs that you can have basically? I mean, there's making beats, right? And then there's, then there's there and then there's the music. Like what are the different paths people can take if they want to start in the music industry or they just love music? Like, where do they, where does someone start? I mean, so, like, so this book, right? This book, how to win big in the music business. There's so start, many start by reading that. You, right. Whether you want to be a DJ or producer or a rapper or a singer, or a manager, an A&R, videographer, a choreographer, uh, a promoter, like anything in the music business, this is the quintessential modern day guy to helping you navigate on how to win. I break it down. I simplify it. There's no inside baseball where you're like, what's he talking about? I don't okay. understand that. You know, there's been no book um, since for the past 20 years that really concisely breaks it down and simplifies it where it's very digestible for the, the you know, for, for the, the whole avatar. Spectrum. I love it. I love it. And turn, turn the book this way. It's not that it's not that big, right? Like it is. That no, is that, like, like if you don't feel like reading the, read the damn Bible, like you can read that book. Right. right? And, the, and the, the proven formula to how to win big is in this book. And this book is free, by the uh, way. It's free? It's free. But yeah, go to winbiginmusic.com. Uh, winbiginmusic.com. We'll link it up in the Hopefully podcast. You got the yeah. Here. yeah, of uh, course. And yeah, man, the book is free, but uh, it also, in two weeks, I'll be dropping uh, a course with over 65 videos uh, with the biggest experts in the industry. I sit down and I create modules where we walk you through from just the, cre the idea I want to win in music to how to actually get there and right. i break it down step by right. step whether you want to you know learn how to record and mix and master your music better i got five time grammy winning fabian uh walking you through that whether you want to learn how to be a videographer uh and shoot great content work with artists i got director x who just did drake in, in cal's pop star video and all of drake's uh -huh. videos with walking justin with bieber him. with justin bieber in it my bieber's in the video uh -huh. and he's on bieber's video too you know if you want to learn how to make effective video content and how to monetize on YouTube and all that stuff. Like that phase rug has over 16 million subscribers on YouTube. You want to learn how to start an independent label, own your own masters. I have Yo Gotti on there. So like all big stars are in this course in the products that come with this course, the products alone are worth the price of the course, yeah, but like okay. the products that you get and that I've created for you guys are so insane winbiginmusic.com winbiginmusic.com any any desire to make it in the music business which by the way the DIY independent uh artist industry will be at 2 billion dollars by the end of 2021 yeah like that's had, to, that's, had, that's had to have changed a lot right from like 1999 when you started to today like yeah. to break into it it's probably changed a lot right cuz you can start doing it yourself now like if, how like in the like if it if you started in 1999, you probably had to get someone else's attention. But now you can probably just start putting stuff out on your own, right? And that makes it easier than 100%. ever before. 
Right. And I even talk about like a major record deal doesn't mean major success. Uh, and I walk you through, you know, the things that you can do one to be successful without a label. And then two, to be so successful that when a label does approach you, you have way more leverage in nice. negotiating that. Deal. Nice. Uh, so all that's in this book, win big in music.com. Win big and I'm really music. excited to help you with what I've done my whole career. I mean, I've helped, you can look at the plaques on the wall. I mean, there's so many people. Just, that just Google Clinton Sparks and you see all the names and all the pictures of all the people that you're with, man. It is awesome. It's impressive. Like, it's so cool to see. You have anyone, you. Uh, you have any- okay. like, tell the truth. When I reached out to you at first, I was probably just like any other person. You probably get a bunch of people that solicit to be on your show. Yeah. And then you just like, yeah, sure. You know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, I was like, cool. I've done this. I've done this. Dude. I did this. I did that. And I was like, like oh, oh, shit. Why I think- and here's why I think I would be a good guest for your show. And the reason I'm saying that is not to pat myself on the back. I really want to emphasize that to really show people that it doesn't matter how successful you are. It doesn't matter what you got going on. It doesn't matter how busy you are. If you take your career serious, everybody matters. I didn't know Sean. Right. You're, matter of fact, I didn't even really do research on your show. Your show could be whack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, it's I was pretty good. Like, it's pretty good. You know, that's good. Yeah, yeah. No, there, but I obviously did afterwards, but I'm like, right. no, the dude seems like a cool dude. I want to link up with him. You know, he's probably got an audience that would make sense to talk to. Right, business people, maybe entrepreneurship. I can, maybe I can build a long-term relationship with this dude. Maybe I can help him too. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? So, and that's why I reached out. And then you came back like, yo, hell yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. Let's set it up. I love it, man. It's so cool. Like, uh, what's your favorite, what's your favorite era of music? What's your favorite, what's your favorite like song, or your favorite artist, like personally that you listen to? Uh, I mean, I could never get sick of Freddie Mercury and Queen. Freddie Mercury and Queen. Uh, That's funny. You'd think you might might say like someone in the hip hop industry or something. But uh, no. So I've also been an artist signed to major record deals uh, as a singer. So I was on Interscope and on Republic Records. Yeah. And Dude, that that song that, music, that song's so ambiguous. I remember that song from when I was in college with Big Sean yeah. and uh, Mike Posner. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I used to have jammed to that yeah. song. Like that's when I was like, oh shit, this is <laughs> awesome that I'm having this guy on my podcast. Like I'm Mike Posner, yeah, yeah. Big Sean, dude, those guys are huge. And like you're just got your arms around them doing the music video. Like that's fucking awesome. I love it, dude. Like you have fun doing yeah. those. Yeah, I mean, yo, that was at a time when Sean was still trying to like kind of make a name for himself. Um, and I believed in him and I thought he was super dope. And Mike Posner was the popular one at the time. Oh, um, really? Drug, I, drug, was, that before, that was that before, was that before or after a drug dealer girl? Cause that's the one song it I was like around the same time. Around the same time. He's huge then. We loved him. Yeah, I was it, in college. It was after, we loved them then. It was after his big record. Um, what was that song? Uh, so cool. Uh, oh, you know, I could cool write. You. I could write uh, you a song to make you fall in love. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it was after that. So he was the star. Um, so that's funny. And Big Sean was. Huh? That's funny that he was the star, and not Big Sean, because like now Big Sean like just came out with his new album and like. Totally. Yep, Detroit too. Yeah. Um, but what happened was me and Sean, me and Mike were driving down the street one day, uh, and he had picked me up from the airport, I think, and we were driving down the street and like. His car was a mess and I was making fun of him. And then <laughs> I said the word ambiguous. And when I said ambiguous, I was like, yo, that'd be a dope title for a song. He's like, yeah, it would be. And then I was like, yo, let's go to the studio right now. We went straight to the studio. We made the record. Me and DJ Snake produced the beat. Dang. Uh, and then we, uh, we did the song. And then I was like, let's get Sean on the record. And he was like, hell yeah. So we got Sean on the record. Um, and then like they were both going to be in Detroit one day. And I found out and I was like, hey, I'm going to fly out my videographer. We're going to steal all the shots and we're going to shoot this video. Um, and Mike was actually super sick, like on the floor, like with the flu. No so way. when it was his time to record, he's like, just wait, just get me up when it's time to, f- to film. What? Filmed him. And at that time, there was a band called Far East Movement. They were in town. I called them. I told them to come be in the video. Um, and then we wanted to be a single, to be honest, me and Sean. Yeah. And we fought for it. And Mike wasn't okay with it being a single. Um, ah. So we were pretty like kind of bummed and then uh, Sean ended up putting it on his finally famous mixtape. And then, then we put the video out and the video got a million views in 24 hours. Yeah. And broke the server at the, at the place. So like, so here. like I, I'm always a little, inter- like a single, I, a mixtape is basically what? Like that's using other people's beats and like an, an album is your official record. Like this, break those down for me. Is a single, a mixtape, an album? Like I kind of know, but like from the official music perspective, like you said, you wanted that one to be a single. 
So an album is a collective of a collection of some original songs that you have right. together to create an album. A mixtape can be what you said. It can be you're just rapping on a bunch of known beats or right. you got a bunch of other records that you made so many records you can't put them all on your album. Some of them okay. you can't clear the sample. Some of them okay. you can't afford to pay for whatever okay. you gotta pay. Okay. Uh, or or also you use them as promotional tools to warm up right. to your like, album. Like Little Wayne, sorry for uh, the wait and stuff like that. He puts right, out right. you gotta like you gotta keep feeding the streets to yeah, keep people interested yeah, yeah. Uh, and excited about the album that's to come. Uh, a single is typically uh, a song that's kind of the commercial, if you will, to promote the movie of your album. Ah, uh, right, right. So right. you look at a single like that, it's like one song off the project. But nowadays, people just put out singles with no plans of having a full album coming. It's just, just keep throwing out records and calling them singles. So that's kind of the music industry now where you may never have a full body of work uh, that's coming out because to keep people, you got to be pretty significant and have a big, pretty big audience for them to want to digest like, 10, 12, 14, right, 15 songs. Right. Like I don't like back people. in the day, you'd get a CD and you put it in your car and you got to listen to those 14 songs. But like now, you and then you'd never, hear, and you'd never hear from that artist again for a couple of years right. until another album came out. Right. Now we're in a different world where you can look at that artist living their life. They can put out studio sessions behind the scenes, right. create new content news freestyles, new singles, appearances on radio. So now you're always getting bombarded with that person. So yeah. do I really care about a full album when I'm hearing new music from them all the time? Right. Plus there's more money to be made. More people will like download and buy a single now than they will buy a whole album. Again, right. unless you have right. millions and millions of fans. Right, right. And yeah, it's only 99 cents for the average consumer on iTunes compared to like buying the whole album. You don't know if you listen to all the songs. That's interesting. That's or so funny free, how it changed. Or, or free. free. I mean, I, I don't pay for I don't pay for music. I think I use my girlfriend's Spotify and I just use YouTube, which I guess I, I pay for YouTube Premium for no commercials. So I guess someone's getting paid somewhere. But yeah, it's it's. I feel like people are spoiled by how free music is and podcasting and all that stuff. Like, uh, but yeah, for sure. if you're good enough, you you find a way to make money. And I I feel like sometimes I hear rappers talking about like they go to clubs and do like. They get paid for like an appearance or something like that. Is that a thing still? Yep. That's cool. Oh, big time. Yeah, of course. It's appearance fee. Show up at the club. Is your $10,000. Yeah. Just show up at the club, drink some alcohol, stand in yeah. VIP and look at everybody like they're below you. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, jump on the mic and do a song or two. It depends. That's you know? cool. Some artists will just do shit because they're cool. Some artists, you have to pay them extra to perform. So right. it just depends. Again, it goes back to, you know how you market yourself and how right, you right. engage with your audience. You know, right. So there's two folds to that. You'll get one artist that's like, I'm deserving of this. I'm not going to give this promoter the opportunity to make all this money off my name. I should be making money too. Right. But then you have another artist that's like, you know, I just want to go out to the people, to my fans. I want to yeah, show up. I want to be yeah. in, the street, in the mix. I'm going to show up. And then some of them, and then you have others that are like, you pay me to show up and then I'll do extra just because I'm a good guy. You know, that's, I want to make my fair. fans happen. That's fair, right. Yeah, so it just like, depends on what kind of person you are. Right. And like it I is, always over deliver. Whatever I do, I over deliver all the time. I think that's smart because your fans love it. Like for my little brand, we give out, we give out free stuff. And like, it's basically like saying, we love you guys. And it's, it's basically promotion because people appreciate it. And then in sales, it's called a uh, like reciprocity. Like if you give someone something for free, like they like almost feel like they will. So they'll end up probably buying your album eventually. If you just like right. show up to a club. Right. And there's, there's, there's another chapter in my book uh, titled uh, sell yourself before you sell what you're selling. Uh, right. So when people buy into you, uh, then more, I mean, how many times have, have you heard a song or didn't really necessarily like an artist and then got the chance to meet them or seen an interview right, and you're like, oh, right. I actually like this dude. Now all of a sudden you like their music that you didn't yep. like before. You know what yep. I mean? And that's because you bought into the person. And, yeah. you know, and that's another thing going back to what you were saying about, you know, online, people always, you know, flashing what they're doing with their cars and their money and stuff like that. Like, certainly that's not your everyday life. Right. Um, so it's really hard to believe or buy into you as a person when you all of a sudden want to stand up for some social cause when it's like, man, what are you talking about? All you right. do is throw money around, have girls stripping, yeah, show off in front yeah. of us and stun and flex on us with your Lambo. Now you <laughs> want to act like you care about some things that are going on in the world? You're come on, man. You're just a, you're just jumping on a trend. Right. And right. that's why I don't even buy into half the people that, you know go and walk in marches or protests or do this thing because it's like, you're just jumping on the bandwagon. If this mattered to you, it would have been something that had been part of your whole shtick. I'm not saying all the time, 
Right. Well, at least we kind of know where you stand. Like, if you know Clinton Sparks, you know where I stand. I'm an honest guy. I'm a hardworking guy. I treat people right. I, I love love. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, I'm talented at the things that I do, and I have a lot of success. So when I come out and I stand up for something, you know I believe that guy. Because right. I know that he cares about the world. And right. I know that he cares about people. And, 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 people and, it fits, and it fits your brand, probably. It, right? Like, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's not even my brand. It's me. It's just authentic. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's easy for you to do because like, it's just I, you being you. I've been watching this um, show recently. It's on Netflix. I know it's older now, but Designated Survivor. Oh, dude. Uh, I I yeah, it was, uh, right. The guy from 24? Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He ends up becoming the president because everyone died. Right. And he was, right? Uh, he was a designated survivor. Right. Uh, so he just by default becomes president. He's an independent. And, it, and all you can watch in this show, all you can see is that he just cares about everybody. There's no like party, there's no agenda. I just want to do what's right. right. And I said to my, my girl, I was like, man, this is exactly who I would be if I was president because <laughs> I couldn't help from wanting to just help. And like, right, I would really, right. if I went to like, if I had speaking engagements, I would literally sit there for five hours and talk to each and every person because I truly actually care. Yeah. You know what I mean? It might, like, it might, it might be yeah. hard to get elected like that, but that's why that show is the perfect example because like... And, and he, he, he's having a hard time getting reelected right. because he doesn't, he's not one of the parties and, and right. he just cares about people. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, I wish we lived in a world where everyone just did the right thing. Everybody helped each other. Uh, when people seemed wrong, they came together and fixed it and made it right. Uh, but the problem with that is everybody has their own definition of right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I feel it, man. <laughs> I love that, dude. That's inspiring. And like, that is the way to be. You're just a good person, love people, centered. And that's a good message for everyone. Uh, dude, I love that. It's like, also uh, knowing, it's also knowing uh, what to just stay out of. Because sometimes there's things that like logical, look at, I have a quote that I wrote on my uh -huh. Instagram. It says, uh, when you're the voice of reason in a room full of unreasonable people, all of a sudden you become the most unreasonable person. Uh, mm. So, you know, and, uh. and like, and that's how I feel. So Interesting. Um, there's a lot of times where I'm just like, I don't even want to get involved in this conversation because I'll make too much sense. <laughs> and like, the people in here aren't making sense, so right. now it won't make sense. And then you'll be like them. defending it, and then you'll have to like back in your points, and you'll look like a bad guy, right? So just stay out of it. Right. And when you're, when you're a matter of fact, when your agenda is just to get to a good place and make sure the most people uh, have been treated right with respect or get what they want, you're always going to have some people in there that go against you. It only takes one person to say something bad about you on the internet. One. Right. You right. could have a million people saying Clinton's the greatest guy I've ever met. One person could turn around and say, oh, that guy's a racist, right? And it's like, I'm obviously not, right? There's millions of people that say I'm not, but there's also millions of people that don't know me. So that's the funniest that insult these days. Is a racist. That state rumor, and now you're going to have somebody whose first experience uh, with Clint Sparks is hearing that he's a racist. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't win. So it's like better to just stay out of conversation sometimes because people are going to take it the wrong way. So I just stick to just doing the right thing helping people when I can um, and just like not giving my opinion about things that there's too many opinions about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just be deluded and all that stuff. Yeah, that's if I can contribute to the good of helping individuals or a lot of people, then I'm all in. I like that. You think like a uh, music these days, like rap and hip hop, like uh, there was there, you know, the song WAP with Cardi B, the song that just came out like wet ass pussy that song like there's that this one political guy like ben shapiro you know him he's like a conservative like nerdy guy but he was like uh saying like wet ass p word and like he was saying how the song is like a bad message and stuff like that and uh it was super nerdy and it was funny it was like a vi kind of a viral moment but uh i was thinking about his point that was like uh like rap music these days like kind of like doesn't have like the best message and i was like i love rap music i don't care but like do you think like what do you think about that that like you might the people who like hip hop, like, and hear the message about like girls and, and monies and cars. Like, do you think that like that whole attitude that you just portrayed about, about kindness and love, like is portrayed in rap music these days? Or do you think it doesn't matter? So I think like there's two sizes and that's the other problem is like, I can always see everyone's point of view. Yeah. Right. I, so when I you try to too. share one, that's how it gets mad. Yeah, like, yeah. let me finish. <laughs> let me get to the whole thought. Right. Um, but uh, 
I, I think uh, was, I, I wonder if this guy was saying these same things back when two live crew or NWA or men have been historically disrespecting uh, women in songs. Uh, right. I didn't see him making a stink the past 10, 15 years about male rappers. Right. Um, I mean, saying like, you know, I banged this chick or this girl gave me head in the ride. Yeah, well, I, th- I like, think that's what he's saying. He, he's, he's saying he's a nerdy, like conservative guy. And he's just saying that rap music portrays bad cultural messages for kids about about sex and uh, like money. And it's like a distorted view of reality. And it's not necessarily the best messaging for like young kids. Like, and I'm always just like, well, okay, it's a, well, maybe. There's, a little, there's a little merit to that. Um, it doesn't necessarily serve the best message all the time. Right. It's not all the songs. It's not every artist. Right. Uh, there are some songs, but you could say the same thing with movies. Yeah. Does it's not, every it's not movie, literal. You, know, you could, yeah, you could say the same thing. For movies, you can say it for heavy metal music, with rock right, music, right. EDM music. You can say it with anything, right? People just want to find a scapegoat right. or a reason to, or somebody to blame for the reason why I'm sure this guy might have kids he does, that yeah. do things or, or live a lifestyle that he's not happy with and he wants to blame it on hip hop, right? And it's like, yeah. look, I have, I have a kid, right? I have kids. My kid is a wonderful dude. He respects women. He cares How about old? his mother. He's 16. Okay. He doesn't care about flexing on the internet, which he could, but right. he doesn't. In fact, so much so, one time he, uh, his, his mom bought him a pair of Gucci sneakers. Um, he doesn't even wear them to school. I was like, why do you never wear these to school? He goes, because I don't want to be a douchebag flexing on other kids that can't afford <laughs> what them. What a guy, man. Right? So it's like, it's like, you know, it's not about the music. It's about the house. It's about the parenting, right? So by the way, I'll also say you could be the greatest parent in the world, and sometimes your kid goes out into the world mm-hmm. and becomes something that you had nothing to do with, right? So I'm not saying it's all parents' fault, but what I'm saying is parenting and really being present and right. leading by example and talking and, and understanding what this kid goes through. And that's another problem. Most parents get so involved with being an adult and working and living adult lives and worrying about adult problems that they're so disconnected from you know youth that the youth doesn't respect their opinion right. because you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't get it, dad. You don't get it. So I purposely stayed connected. I mean, what I do for a living. I mean, you're a pretty, you're a pretty cool ass dad. Come on. Well, thank you. So, <laughs> but like, you know, so I, but I stay in tune with stuff. Right. So that when I talk to him, I say, look, pal, I let him know it's the same thing in business. I let you know that I know your feelings and explain them so clearly that you're like, holy shit, is this guy reading my brain? So that when I give my opinion, you know that I know where you stand. So the same thing is in business. If I'm going to negotiate a deal, I want to partner with somebody. I say, look, here's what you're going through. Here's what you're thinking. Here's some of your concerns. Here's your weaknesses. And I know these things. Am I right in saying this? Yes. Cool. Now that you know that I know where you're coming from, when I say what I'm going to say, it will hold much more value. So the same thing is with with my with my son. So when I when I tell him, you know. Is this how you're feeling? Is your girlfriend da 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 da? Is this? He goes, yeah, dad, damn it, holy crap, that's exactly how I feel. I go, cool. Now that you know that I know, when I give you this advice, you know I know what I'm talking about. That's great. Um, so, you know, I think to, to your main point about um, do I think that you know this influences the culture? Yeah, of course it does. You know, art influences reality. Reality, you know, copies uh, uh, art. You know yeah. what I mean? So right. it really comes down to you know parenting, community. Right individuals you know there's a lot of shit out there there's, you can become a thief if you want to there's ways to learn how to be a thief there's ways yeah. to learn how to be a drug dealer there's right. ways to learn how to be a stripper there's ways to learn <laughs> there's equally ways to learn how to sell e-commerce online of course how yeah. to build businesses how to buy real estate right. how to, so it's really up to you to decide which lane you want to go down it's all available so it's not like you're like this is the only thing i know right. yeah that was an excuse 20 years ago yeah. where we didn't have access. Um, that's a weak excuse now. That's a weak we excuse now. Nothing, oh, no the, mu- the, mu- the music anymore. influenced me. I didn't, like, no. There's, it's an excuse, right? Well, there was a point where, like, say you come from a, a poor economical community. Right. Uh, you'd be like, well, we don't have access to this. Or we don't know that. And I come from that. I come that we were broke, right? Yeah. And there wasn't access to stuff, which is why when I was young, I was a criminal. Because there wasn't, it was survival. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, but now the internet, it's like everything's available. Everything's right. available. Right. You literally can be, 
I just seen on the internet this morning a homeless guy like moved to some city with his guitar. He got a guitar, moved to some city, took his his shitty phone, started just going and performing in train stations and filming him making people happy. People would gather around him. He just starts singing and get people involved. <laughs> and it's like and it's just like that's the beauty of the world is that you can decide who you want to be. No one can dictate what you're going to be. And with the internet and all the readily information that's out here for you, you deciding to not do something in your life or excel, you're the lazy one because it's all available to you. And if, even if you have an excuse like, I don't have Wi-Fi, I don't have a laptop, go to the library. Yeah. Go to something. It's available. Yeah, yeah. homeless you know people I mean? have iPhones. Yeah. Like you, yeah, my, 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 my hair stood up my arm a little bit. I love that, man. You, you decide who you want to be, and there's no excuse, especially in the modern world. Like, I love that. I love that. That's Absolutely. really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so, if you want to learn more how to win big, you get how to win big in the music business, which also teaches you how to win big in life. Winbiginmusic.com. Winbiginmusic.com. The book is free. It won't be, it's only going to be free for two more weeks. Okay. So I would get it for free if I was you. It definitely needs to be part of your collection. If you're someone that wants to be an entrepreneur, if you're somebody that wants to learn how to better communicate, understand how to network better, how to build your business, this is the book. Even though it says music business, it will help you with any business, including your personal relationships. Boom. Love it, man. We'll leave it there. Clinton Sparks, an inspiration, an absolute monster in the music business. A great dad, a smart dude, and now an author, an entrepreneur. And dude, I love talking to you, man. Thank you so much for coming on. You know, you know, you, you mentioned I've done so many things throughout my life and I've uh -huh. had so many titles. Uh, somebody recently asked me, uh, out of all the things you've done from publishing, managing, DJing, producing, artist, entrepreneur, marketer, what's your favorite title? And my favorite title out of every title I've ever had is Dad. It Dad. always will be. I'm getting married in uh, two weeks and I'm going to look a bit, we have a kid probably after that. And I'm interested in it. Everyone always says it's going to feel, you'll never understand the feeling. And I'm like, I think I can try to understand it, but it'll be coming down the road for me. Hey, well, so. How long have you been with your girl? Uh, how long have you been with your girl? Like eight, nine years, something like that. Well, I'll tell you something. One piece of advice I'll give yeah. you, never stop dating your wife. I like that. I like that. Just, uh, yeah, don't ever get like, I'm married now. I don't have to worry about it. Always like keep the romance, keep the, keep the flirtation. As hard as, hard as you worked to get her. Yeah. That's what we said at the beginning. Keep that same energy to keep her. All right. That's good advice. And I'm sure she'll hear this and appreciate that too. <laughs> yeah. She will agree. She's like, you don't even want to take me to brunch this weekend. <laughs> I'm like, it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's your excuse. Yeah. Do anyway, you know? man. Sean, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having me on here and helping expose, um, you know, my book and what I'm doing to, to your audience. And I wish you the best of luck and another 60 plus more podcasts under your belt, man. And, and congratulations on your wedding. And uh, thank you very much for answering my DM and having me on here. Of course, man. Win big. Clinton Sparks. Thanks, man. Later. Get familiar, guys. <laughs>